Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Movie Back series. Today I'm here at an amazing location actually, I really love this location. I'm here at Yaya's which is in Osu, is this Osu or Laboni? Laboni. Laboni, okay, it's great, it's me, it's Laboni, we're in Laboni. Okay, and I'm here to speak to Kwame and Estelle, is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's nice to talk to you guys today. So, this is your lovely restaurant that we're at here, right? Yes. Okay, so first of all, tell me, are you going in? I am going in, yes. You're going in? And are you going in? No, I'm Ivorian. Ivorian? Yes. Okay. Oh, and you're married? Yes. You have your arm around her, so oh. I'm not sure. i have to check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, have you lived here all your life? I was born here. Mm -hmm. I spent some time overseas mm -hmm. um, in New York and in London. And okay. Uh, recently relocated. Okay, so how long had you been out of the country for, would you say? About 20, 22, 23 years. Wow, 23 years, that's a long time. So, is this your first time in Ghana? No, I've been in Ghana uh, twice. Okay. Yes. Twice before, okay. Yeah. So how does someone who is Ivorian meet someone who is Ghanaian? You've only been here twice, so how did that happen? Um, I could take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we actually met um, in New York. So I was oh. living in New York. She lived in Paris. She mm -hmm. came to New York to visit. And uh, that's how we met. It was love at first sight, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, something like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Don't be shy about yeah. it. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, so you obviously ended up getting married and then you decided to move to Ghana. Was that the, the plan that you had all along? Uh, for me, the plan was always to move to Ghana. Uh, that wasn't the plan. Nope. Um, so when I uh, moved back, I'm actually doing something very different. I'm actually into farming. Okay. And she decided to join. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking for different business opportunities. Right. Not, we're looking at a restaurant. Okay. Oh, that's uh, interesting. But eventually, you know, we decided mm. uh, on doing this. And even the original idea was something smaller, quirkier. Right. Uh, looking at something like a food truck. Okay. Or um, something smaller like a coffee shop or a crepe shop. A crepe shop. Right, um, right, then, right. And then you ended up with this whole place. That's what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why did you choose Ghana over going to Ivory Coast? Um, so it was actually mostly my idea. Mm -hmm. like I said I was born and raised in Ghana went to the New York to, for, um, to finish high school and university mm -hmm. and also worked spent right. some time in London as well mm -hmm. um, through education and also working and the plan was always move, to move back so when we met um, she had previously expressed thoughts of also moving back to Africa she was right. from Coast, obviously um, but then yeah Ghana made the most sense because I had more roots here right and and I had fresh. Well, she said, I don't speak French. <laughs> uh, so it was much easier because she her English was much better than my French. Right. So it made more sense. Okay. So and I also had a number of businesses in Ghana. That right. Were I see. That, that makes sense. So did you ever explore the idea of perhaps moving to Ivory Coast instead? Uh, did, it, did you consider it? It's, it's, it's not right away. Perhaps something we, we would consider in the future. Right. Um, so that, like I said, I had businesses here in mm -hmm. Ghana. My French is not very good. <laughs> um, okay. So, so that would have been a big barrier. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so we decided to start in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And also, I think the perception, and we've come to realize it is true that Ghana is a bit of a softer London. Right. For most people. So mm -hmm. it's easier to start here than us. The business has established itself, then the goal will be to look at other places. All right, I see. Yeah. Okay. So how did you find the move, having obviously your, your roots from Ivory Coast and now being in Ghana, how, how did you see the change? How was it for you? Um, it wasn't easy because mm. uh, I've never been here. I mean, I've been here just for vacation one, one week and then Came here, stay. Is no, I don't have friends, I don't have family here, so mm. it wasn't easy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Would you say that the countries are almost a little bit similar? Were there similarities? I don't. I 
I was born in Ivory Coast, but I'm, I'm not living there, so... Oh, yeah. I see. So I can really compare Ghana to Ivory Coast. Okay. She's more yeah. Parisian. Ah, I so see. So she grew up in Paris. <laughs> I think that, that there's been a bit of a culture shock. Yeah. In the sense that... For everybody. Well, uh -huh. like, <laughs> yeah, more so. But even like, at least with us, the US and in the UK. Yeah. The more similarities here. Right, right. France is a bit different. Mm, mm. Um, the way business runs, um, mannerisms, right. communication styles. Mm. My, the, 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 my English too. And also, she, she's not a native English speaker. Right. Um, it's so easy. it's just been, the transition hasn't been easy. The yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I can we, understand. We're making progress. Mm. Um, every day has been. A steep learning curve. Yeah. Um, constantly looking for ways to improve. Mm -hmm. And small, small. We're, 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 small, we're, small, as we we're, say. We're, yeah. We're, we're in, yeah. In the right direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So for you, as being someone who had been out of the country for over twenty years, mm -hmm. moving back here, how was that for you? Um. So for me, I've always, even though I've been living outside the country, mm -hmm. I've still been, you know coming to Ghana fairly regularly. All right. I, I've been doing business in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So the transition was a little more smoother for me. Mm -hmm. But I said, there's still a number of things that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you still would have seen some differences because, you know, coming here for one week, two weeks, even a month, right. is different to living here full time. Absolutely. So did you, did you notice that? Uh, lots of, lots, said, of, ah. lots <laughs> of challenges, like, you know, dealing with electricity. Yes. Uh, not very reliable. Uh -huh. Water. You mm -hmm. know, we, we have, you know, stream of water. Mm -hmm. We also have reservoirs, but for the, for the reason, yes. that, that doesn't seem to work. And <laughs> you constantly have to be on, you know, on the front foot looking at yeah. things that you don't expect to. Right. You know, and uh, yeah, and also, I mean, I, I've, I've never really worked in Ghana. I spent mm. most of my working career outside and work ethic not, yeah. not quite the same mm -hmm. um, we're in the hospitality business mm -hmm. um, it's fairly new I mean I think the Ghana restaurant industry I'll say really took off around 2019 okay but it's still a very young industry mm -hmm. and there isn't a pool of really available talent with deep right. know-how and expertise so mm -hmm. finding talent has been a challenge in social media yeah right, right. You thought you know I know uh, Ghana has high unemployment mm -hmm. rates. You know, we have good paying jobs, but we can seem to find people that are ready, eager, yeah. and hungry to do the job. Mm -hmm. um, just little things. Um, yeah. yeah it, it hasn't been the smoothest transition mm -hmm. you know, as much as I've, you know, born and raised here. Yeah. And, you know, come here very regularly. You know, mm -hmm. I've been doing work here. Yeah. So, um, living and doing things full time. You know? mm -hmm. Mm. has been uh yeah has been it hasn't been it hasn't mm. been smooth i know uh, it's, it hasn't been smooth for everybody anybody nobody even if you don't even start it's still not smooth right, so right, right, right. it's like that so you're not alone that's for sure <laughs> so how did you go from having the idea of having a food truck business to having this whole place how did that come about um i think when we started we as you said we want to do a food truck and then we start our research mm -hmm. uh, how where and uh, we saw different places and uh, when we saw this place mm -hmm. we i would say we fell, fell in love right we, we love the place mm. and uh, we say okay let's try and right. uh, that's how we we end up here okay i can say so had either of you had a restaurant before mm, no never <laughs> So this was like completely new idea for... It was completely new, completely unplanned. What? Um, some it of was the, a little bit planned. It was, right, but um, I see it was planned, but then original idea was not a restaurant and two, it wasn't something... That big. Right. Right. But some of the feedback we got was um, in this Ghana. If you mm -hmm. want to do something, like just do it. Yes. Don't, don't do small, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we say, okay, since we went to do a restaurant, why not to to go and 
and try something new. Right. You know? and, and it's the same with Hala, right? Yeah. It's the same issue. It's true. If you're doing a small food truck. Yeah. Why? So why <laughs> yeah. spend all that energy, time. money, time yeah. with limited revenue potential? Mm. Whereas if you do something big, you know, the upside. Wow. Okay. Yes. And you were not scared of like the risk factor that was involved. Obviously the fact that you hadn't really owned a restaurant before. You were gonna do it in a country that you weren't necessarily a hundred percent used to yet. You were kinda like damp putting your feet into it. So how how was that? How did you find the risk? I think honestly, uh, we never think on purpose about the risk because we know we don't we 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 don't know we doesn't know anything about the western business yeah so when we started we start read uh do some research yeah. and uh, because we we don't know anything we we do our best everything. right we just say okay we start something new mm -hmm. let's do it right we, we don't scare mm -hmm. obviously you scare but yeah i don't know how to say it but we decide to do it yeah so yeah we start do it and we do our best every day Mm -hmm. read uh, I watch some videos uh, mm -hmm. uh, so yes I think it's like we are a little bit I don't know if naive is a right word there was an element of naivety <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a little bit of naivety yeah. is probably yeah. what you need yeah. so that you actually do it yeah. so right, 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 mm. right, right. Yeah. but then again also like she said the original idea was small so the risk was much smaller right obviously and, and the risk doesn't get any you know, as it gets bigger, it does more complex. Right. So it's, it's still new. We're still under getting a good understanding. Mm. And always been on the front foot to identify risk. Yeah. And working through ways to mitigate. Right. I think we learn. Right. I think we also see this like, uh, let's try and mm -hmm. learn at the same time. Right. We don't pretend. Yeah. Like, oh, we are expect. We know everything about mm. restaurant or business. No, we want to know. We yeah. want to learn. So that's, I think that's why we, we don't scare that much. Yeah. Obviously we made a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. and we that's still, normal. we still make it. But I think the fact we don't, we don't know anything about it, give us some, I don't know how I to think say sometimes it. knowing too much Something, can be yes. an inhibitor. Well, right, you know, so right. Yeah, so I think sometimes if you know too much, mm -hmm. you do get paralyzed by excessive mm -hmm. analysis. Right. So it's like it's a baby trying to walk for the first exactly. time. They don't know that. If you fall down, you will hurt yourself. Exactly. But they just try, right? right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And also, we also have identified yeah. talent. Areas where mm -hmm. we haven't been particularly good at, we've gone to recruit people to help yes. mm -hmm. um, address our, yes. our skills gap. Right, you know? right. And mm -hmm. that's how we've managed to overcome mm. some of the hurdles okay yeah. so i'm gonna ask you a really hard question now mm -hmm. so what makes your restaurant different to all the other restaurants here what's your unique thing that you have so um so so what we're the way we see ourselves i think there's a bit of a backdrop to this right? okay so uh, when estelle came up with the idea of this restaurant mm -hmm. um after she had done her research, um, like I said, she came to the view that the restaurant industry um, had come a long way from 2019. Mm -hmm. But being Parisian, she felt she could add some color and verb to what we're doing. So right. the name was La Parisienne. Yeah. But in the course of opening, my, my mom passed away. Oh. So the name Yaya is actually the name of my mom. Right. Was Yaya. Oh. So more essentially, what we're trying to do is to build a lifestyle brand right um and the goal is to use the proceeds from operations some of the proceeds yes and, and <laughs> not the all the proceeds <laughs> the funds and courses that estelle my mom and i care about areas right. in, in in the areas of mental health and education okay um so we like to think of ourselves as a Christ first mission driven restaurant so oh. there's a value set right you know, so there are values behind what we're doing right, right. So, the way we see things is if you're looking for great food, you get at home. Right, mm -hmm. right. If you're looking for great ambience, you know, it's a lot of money sloshing around. Uh -huh. But if you're looking for an experience, if mm. you care about values that we care about, yes. it's hard to replicate that. Right. And also, uh, for me, uh, you know, I'm black. I, I grew up in Paris mm -hmm. and uh, come back in African country, even if it's not my 
let's say my country yeah is a big challenge and it makes things different i came here very motivated very maybe sometimes naive but mm -hmm. with the only one thing i want to do things differently i want to show uh, i'm french i'm right. franco i'm french but also african and mm -hmm. uh, I, I think i might the way I see things is very different, and uh, I, I want to share. Uh, I want to share this who I am and uh, what I can bring on the table. Mm. And it's different today. We are this new. I want to say maybe new people, a new generation. Yeah. Uh, some of us born in Europe or US, we come back home. Mm. We are trying to do something new. Yeah. And I think we have we have so we have a lot of things to to share and to yeah. So I think. For my for my side, yes. So it's the re restaurant is a reflection of who she is, right? And she's very different from right. And I think that experience, yeah, it's very different from. I mean, they're you know nice. <laughs> I, I would imagine nicer places. Yeah. Like I said, you, you mm -hmm. get good food everywhere. But yeah. I think what she is built around who we are. Right. And that is something that is just. We are, I think yeah. as I say, we are new, those new people, new generation from mm. home, very. Uh, we are we are educated. We know we we try. We are trying to build something here, you mm -hmm. know, to give also opportunities to those young people. Say, listen, I grew up in France. I do. I went there, but I came back home. Why you want to go there? Mm -hmm. Stay here and try to let's right. try to do something together. Mm -hmm. so that's why we we want to do. And I don't think a lot of people in uh, restaurant in Ghana. Have this background we have, right? And um, yeah, so I think these are particular. Mm, okay, so tell me, um, what's what one thing that you love about being in Ghana? Hmm. <laughs> I think Ghana is um, maybe people, but it's very controversial, right? Because. A lot of people here, they are very respectful, mm -hmm. uh, they are very calm, Yeah. but uh, the other side also in, is, is a little bit, sometimes it's complicated, you know, mm -hmm. but I think, yes, mostly people, I, I love to talk to them, it's very different, they are very peaceful, they yeah. are very nice, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. And for yourself? Uh, um, well, obviously, family here, friends yeah. that I've grown up with, but also, um, it makes, brings you feel alive when you're here. Like, I say that all the time. Yeah, yes. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does. I don't get no. I, I don't want to you know, create a romanticized. Oh, of version. course not. Yeah. There's a lot of issues. Yes, of course. Like I said, you deal with water uh -huh. every day. Uh huh. Sachet bath every day. Uh huh. You know, people now respecting the rule of law every right, day. Right. Right. Our, our politics is it's broken. Yes. Right? It's something that I I get when I I mean, when I leave the shores. Yeah. When I go to other places, you know, mm. the stress with me. Yeah. But when I come back, I always feel alive. Yes, you know? yes. And that's true. That's and, true. Uh, that I is, agree. That is it's mm. priceless, you know. Yeah. In spite of all the challenges and issues and wahala that we have. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. As a final question, what advice would you give to someone who perhaps? doesn't know Ghana that well but they want to move what's the one key piece of information you'd give them honestly if you if I know someone in Ghana and I called the person to ask advice and he gave me advice you know I, I always say it's a personal travel it's a personal path, right. mm -hmm. experience I really decide one day to come here nobody give me any advice right and it, i love this it's perfect for me right because as i say when you know something you're you're scared you, you yeah. think twice mm -hmm. you don't you say oh maybe maybe but at some point when you don't know or when you just try it's is in your is in you if you feel like you want to do it just do it yeah and do your best period absolutely don't scare don't listen like oh maybe don't mm. even listen water electricity these things it's yeah happened and it's happened but it's a personal trial oh, right mm -hmm. just do it yeah yes. what about for yourself um i like i like what you said you're so gonna I, just you're gonna there, piggy bank on that a, <laughs> like a little um slogan for nike uh-huh yesterday said tomorrow Mm -hmm. Just do it, right? Just tomorrow do it. will never come, right? Right. So 
you know, today's yesterday, is tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, but that said, I mean, you can't just come in. You also need to do some prep work. Yeah. Is, I mean, Ghana's very different, right? Yeah, even, absolutely. Even within West Africa, I have friends from Nigeria and Ivory Coast, and they come here, right? Then they tell you, like, it's yeah. a very different. Ooh, yeah, different yeah. Mindset, different culture. Just mm. Very different. It's good in its own way, but yeah. it's also not easy to adapt to. Right, right. You know, I have right. the benefit of having been born and raised here. Yeah. You know, and also, like, sometimes you, you might need to manage expectations. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you go to a restaurant, I mean, we, even us, we, mm -hmm. the areas that we're still, we're still not quite there. Yeah. We need some service. Mm. It's, we, we had a different expectation. It's still a struggle to get to what we expect. Yeah. So, Manage expectations and just understand that things are different. And mm. Once you come in with that mindset, mm. I think it's yeah, be open-minded. A little more, yeah. You know, I get it. Smoother. I get if you it. come in with, you know, this is New York and it's mm -hmm. been New York and Ghana. Yeah, it will be a big disappointment. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so for people that want to find you. Where are we located? Maybe you can, I, I'm terrible with directions and trying to tell anyone how to get places. Where, where can they find you? How can they find you? Uh, we are at Naboni, mm -hmm. uh, right beside Zenin Bank. Okay. And uh, we have also our web website. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Instagram? Instagram, yes. So, Yaya La Parisian. Okay. No, mm -hmm. no hyphen, no comma. No, no nothing. Yaya La Parisian. Yaya La Parisian. Straight. Yeah. Voilà. Okay. Say it again. Yaya La Parisian. Yeah, yeah, La Parisienne. Voilà. <laughs> awesome, lovely. Well, yeah. thank you so much for talking to me today. I appreciate it. I actually really love this space, like genuinely. Yes, I don't yeah. know. Did you? Who designed it? Who's the brain behind do, putting this together? I will be me. Is you? Yeah. Oh well. Not me. I knew it was, <laughs> but I've just been kind. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Well, thank you so much for your That's time so today. Good. I appreciate it very much. Okay. <laughs> So guys, that is the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please go ahead, check them out on Instagram. If you're in Ghana, come here, have a look around. I mean, I love it. They have a really nice indoor space as well. So it's really nice and comfy. If you like the sun, you can be outside. If you're more of a, I like the AC, you can be inside. It's a lovely place. So come check it out. That's the end of today's video. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please, please, please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to also like, comment and share this video. Until next time, I am out. Nutifafa.